Sacrifice is, I think, the only way that you can succeed in this life. Um, outside sports, you know, I've watched my mom, my family, my grandma, everybody sacrifice. And um, you know, the saying, a community um, raises a child. And I feel like I'm a product of that. I've been blessed to have, you know, the mom that I had, the, um, the talents that <laughs> she was able to give me, my talents my dad was able to give me, and I'm just embracing it and, and trying to run with it. I had no choice but to be competitive at some point. And I think it started when my mom had me play basketball and compete in everything um, against older kids. And of course, they were naturally faster than me and they were more developed than I was, but that didn't matter to me. And that's also the point where I developed a no excuse mentality. I don't believe in odds. Um, I just, because I feel like defied most of them. <laughs> You know, and that goes back to, you know, being an African-American male, um, an African-American male raised by a single parent, you know, just you can look at the stats all you want, you know, to graduate high school, to graduate college, to become a, a Division One athlete, to make it to the NBA. I mean, that's less than 1% of all basketball players make it to the NBA. So there's no odd that I don't believe in those. Draft day hits. I was at my high school, in the gym, working out. I had my phone on loud, and I was just working out, working out, working out. Not even thinking about, trying to forget what's going on, and just working on my game, working on my game, and then I just felt it getting later, and later, and later. I looked at the phone, and it was 11.40, something like that. At that point, I was like, it's not gonna happen. Grandma came up to me and you've got till 12.01 to be mad about this, be pissed off about this, feel cheated about it. And it was almost like on draft night, I was just like, really? Like, really? I gotta do this again? All right, you got till 12.01. I'm gonna be pissed, I'm gonna kick some stuff, I'm gonna throw some stuff over, I'm gonna turn some chairs over, and once 12.01 hits, it's time to, uh, time to shock the world. plan B in my mind because I feel like when you do that you're almost expecting not to succeed at what your initial goal is but plan A in my mind this is what's going to happen you know I, I prepare to succeed and this team is preparing to succeed and you know, that's all our minds are on you know we don't really care who's who's counting us out who's counting us in you know our, our preparation is is to win and, and that's what we're doing the chemistry and family type bond atmosphere between teammates is it's huge. I feel that we can build that, and I feel that we, we have all the tools 
right to do that. I want this era to be known as these, these boys hoop. They get out and hoop, they get out and play basketball, they compete for each other, they compete with each other. They're competing against each other in practice. You can see them getting better every day. Uh, that's what I want people to think about when they think about the Blazers. Home crowds can really swing, swing games. Noise takes away play calls. They can't talk, they can't communicate. If Steve Nash can't tell Kobe where to go, then we're okay. <laughs> and you guys did a great job, and you took some pressure off of me. <laughs> that, that, that roar, you know, that roar when tip off starts, that roar when they know, when everybody in the arena knows that the opposing team is about to call a timeout. That roar, when they know that shot is about to fall before it does. I mean, that, you just drive on that, you live on that. You know, when I got here, when I got to Portland, I could see what the, the history is and, and um, how proud the fans are and the community is and the organization is. Uh, Clyde Drexler, Terry Porter, you know, just people that I could go down the list of. of and um, that's what they want. You know, they want winning. They want that tough, that grittiness that, that Portland was. And I feel like we can do that again, and, you know, the championship. And I don't see why we can't do that. I don't see why we can't bring that back. And, you know, the fact that, you know, a, a bunch of Portland fans say they're still wearing the old, old jerseys, the old throwback stuff. What they remember, that's what they're holding on to. So we got to give them something new to hold on to. We're excited. Uh, we're counted out. We're not expected to do much anything. And I think that's right where everybody wants to be. You know, this team is, we're hungry. Josh Howard stripped away by Matthews. Look at this. Price. Matthews. Open three. Minnesota.